Hey guys, um, I just wanted to pop in real quick, uh, prior to the video, ignore the bedhead. Um, I've been up for a little bit. Um, I wanted to pop in real quick and let you know that, um, our secretary that I've asked prayers for the last couple streams has passed away. Um, and with that, um, I took yesterday off to kind of just emotionally process everything myself and grieve because um, Barb was like a second mom to me. But with that, um, I don't want to talk about that <laughs> all that much. Um, but with that, the Let's Talk Grief video that I promised Friday and I believe I talk about in today's video might be delayed further. Um, because with taking yesterday off, it shifted everything to the back again, and uh, I just don't know. I don't have a lot of details for the Let's Talk Grief video as far as how I'm wanting to structure it. So I'm starting my workday early. You might be able to see it's just getting sunrise out. I'm starting my workday a lot earlier um, so I can get this video edited and scheduled and ready. Um, so what I want to do is just announce this big announcement that I keep talking about and keep beating around the bush that is coming with this video. In case it doesn't come out Friday, if it comes out Friday, you're just going to hear it again. If it doesn't, you're hearing it here, and I will be announcing it starting with this Friday stream, and I'll be announcing it throughout every video until it happens. On Wednesday, December 30th, we are actually doing a charity live stream. What does that mean is... I will be live on Twitch. Um, it's twitch.tv slash crazy youth leader. It is my Twitch. And we are going to be raising money for the Humane Society. Last year, we did a lose coin offering to raise money for the Humane Society. And we wanted to do something like that again. And with the losses that our group has had, um, the human losses that our group has had the last two months, um, both Cynthia and Barb were huge animal lovers, and we wanted to dedicate um, a donation in their honor to support one of the things that they both loved. Um, so again, that is happening Friday, December, Wednesday, December 30th, from noon to midnight. It's a big 12-hour stream. The kids, you guys have been wanting me to stream for 12 hours, so your wish is granted. Uh, there is a Facebook fundraiser that will probably come out Friday that I don't know. Again, the structure behind all of it is still to be determined. Um, but again, we are going to raise money for the Humane Society as our end of the year, end of the year offering and trying to end 2020 strong in a year full of loss and chaos. <laughs> so um, again, I wanted to pop that in uh, today just in case the grief video does not come out on Friday like I want. I still have full intentions to try it, but with that I have to finish my studying today so that way I can record it tomorrow, have time to edit, and then get it up on Friday. It is my 100% goal. It might not happen because I also have a work meeting on Thursday and other stuff will more than likely come up between now and then. And I'm trying to remain, I'm trying to take care of myself at the same time, still trying to make sure that I manufacture, get get the stuff out for you guys. Um, I'm kind of relearning a healthy balance between the two. So, But I am one who processes by kind of staying busy and distraction and all that kind of stuff. Like I said, I took yesterday off to do a lot of processing and a lot of grieving. And uh, I do feel better today than I did yesterday. Um, I know there's still be some leftover as time goes on but that's what happens so um i do ask that you hold our church family in prayer and the family of barb sarah in prayer and the family of cynthia scott in prayer you know all of those losses and so many other losses that the church family has had we've had i think like two or three other people die in the last couple months i ask that you just hold all of us in prayer um more so the families of Cynthia Scott and the families of Barb Sayer. Like I said, I am okay. Don't worry about me. But hold everybody else in prayer because losing anybody, especially at this time of year, nine days before Christmas, um, 
is not fun no matter how you look at it. It's not easy no matter how you look at it. But I'm done. Wanted to let you know. Quick recap. Charity live stream Wednesday, December 30th, noon to midnight on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash crazy use later. We're going to play games. We're going to talk. We're going to reminisce. We're going to raise money for the Humane Society. There will be a Facebook fundraiser live sometime towards the end of this week. I don't know for sure. And that's it. So enjoy the word for this week. And then I will see you Friday. I will see you Friday for Christmas at Freddy's. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to The Word. If you don't know what The Word is, it is our youth lesson series that talks about the Word, God's Word, and everything that he wants us to know for this week. If you have not caught up by now, we are in, a, we are in the middle of our series called Best Year Ever. Um, it is the perfect series that leads us into 21, learning different ways how we can have our best year ever, because I think we can all admit by now that it's a dead meme, but 2020 has kind of sucked. So, for the past four weeks, we have been looking at Joseph's life and seeing all the stuff he's been to have the best life ever, all the stuff he's been through. And, uh, well, we'll get into all that. So... Let's get into it. This week we're going to talk about learning forgiveness. We are going to focus on Genesis 42 to 45 before you scream and start throwing pitchforks at me. It is four chapters in the Bible. I know we are only reading a small handful of scripture, 15 verses in total out of that entire four chapters. I am summarizing a ton of it, so do not worry. The focus for today is going to be this. When we experience freedom, if we, we can experience freedom, sorry, if we let go of a grudge. So who have you been holding a grudge against? Who do you need to forgive? On the flip side, whom do you need to seek forgiveness from? Holding down a grudge won't help any of us. And like Joseph, we need to move on. So there are many things that can prevent us from having the best year ever, such as your favorite football team losing the Super Bowl, Talk about discontinuing your favorite item on the menu, which, let me say this, I swear this lesson is like, you know, a fortune teller because this was not written in 2020 and before all the Taco Bell stuff went away. I just thought that was crazy when I read that. Uh, your parents buy you a cat instead of a dog because we all know dogs are better than cats. Um, and BTS decides to break up and never make music again. Okay, those are funnier examples, I know, but some people can be very deeply affected by things that other people do, ruining their chance of having the best year ever. But there is another category of things that is keeping you from having your best year ever, and it's the things that you do to yourself, such as you making the conscious decision never to do homework, and therefore you're forced to repeat a year of school. Or... You decide to spread gossip more than being a good friend. So you talk behind everyone's back, leaving tons of people mad at you and becoming friendless in the process. Or you get angry with someone and refuse to forgive them, leaving you bitter and upset. We tend to sabotage ourselves with our own actions. Jesus loves us and has a great plan for us, but we somehow find ways to interfere with. And here lies Joseph. Joseph, as we've talked about the past four weeks, was having a tough life. But then life turned the corner when Pharaoh got him out of prison and made him second in command of all Egypt. Life was starting to be fun again for Joseph. And in fact, it was almost kind of going too well for him. And this leads us to the next part of the story today. He was going to have to make a decision that could either propel him into having the better year yet, or make it impossible to have the best year ever. So let us start with our first section of scripture, Genesis 42, 1 through 7. Again, first part of the 15 verses we're going to read in total today, so calm down. So, but here's what it says. Again, I read from the message just for more storytelling. Okay. Um, Genesis 42, 1 through 7 says this. When Jacob learned that there was food in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why do you sit around here and look at one another? I've heard that there is food in Egypt. Go down there and buy some so that we can survive and not starve to death. Ten of Joseph's, Joseph's brothers went down to Egypt to get food. Jacob didn't send Joseph's brother Benjamin with him. He was afraid that something bad might happen to him. So Israel's sons 
joined everyone else that was going to Egypt to buy food. For Canaan too was hit hard by the famine. Joseph was running the country. He was the one who gave out all the rations to all the people. When Joseph's brothers arrived, they treated him with honor, bowing down to him. Joseph recognized them immediately, but treated them as strangers and spoke roughly to them. He said, where do you come from? From Canaan, they said, we come to buy food. Okay, so this is like the climax of the movie of Joseph's life. He has an opportunity for sweet, sweet, sweet revenge or loving reconciliation. You can almost feel the tension in the room as you envision the brothers entering Joseph's presence. And they don't recognize him. The brothers do not recognize Joseph at this point. Joseph recognizes them and has a decision to make, again, for sweet, sweet revenge or for loving reconciliation. And take a second, put yourself in Joseph's shoes. How would you respond if you were him? The brothers don't recognize him in this new role in life. So what would you do if you were him? Would your answer reveals the conditions of your heart? And I actually, I want to take a minute too, because I actually pondered this. And I wrestled with this question in all honesty. What would I do? Sweet revenge or loving reconciliation? Joseph already started off with, you know, kind of that rough response. I don't know if I would be rough, but I would be very distant. I would not kind of cave, I would keep things very nonchalant, and move on. You know, kind of just go through the business, not knowing anything was different. So, but that's me. So now it's time to read Genesis 42.8 through 44.34. I'm kidding. This is the part of the scripture I have summarized. Do not worry. So just some quick highlights. Again, you will probably see them on the screen like we did last week. But here it is. Joseph had remembered what he dreamed about his brothers and claimed that the brothers were spies that are looking for Egypt's weakness. So he's saying that the brothers, are, he, Joseph remembered what his dream was about his brothers. So he's claiming now that they're just spies trying to find the weaknesses in Egypt. The only way would Joseph, or Joseph would let them free is if they got Benjamin. And during the time they got Benjamin, Joseph had him in, Dale, in jail for three days. And during this thir on the third day, Joseph convinced them to have one of them stay in prison while the other nine go back and get Benjamin. So they got back to Canaan and told Jacob everything that had happened and the deal that was made. Jacob didn't want to get rid of Benjamin. He was grieving the thought of losing Benjamin. He had already lost Joseph. He did not want to, and he lost another son too. Oh, Joseph and Simeon, sorry. So he had already lost two sons. He could not bear the grief of losing a third son. But things were getting desperate. The famine in Canaan was getting way more harsh. And Israel wanted the sons to go back and get some more. But Judah reminded him of the deal Joseph made. After a long time of convincing, Joseph or Jacob finally let Benjamin go with him. Jacob also wanted the sons to bring Joseph a gift um, of some of the land's best produce, kind of a, like a peace offering. So Joseph saw them coming back. They had Benjamin with them. He told his household manager to kill and prep an animal so that he will have dinner with his brothers. So they did what he said. Joseph's inviting them in to dinner. The brothers were invited in, but they were all worried that they were actually just going to get punished because they themselves had been carrying all the grief that, of everything they had done to Joseph. So they thought they were finally getting punished for what they did. But Joseph told them, it's going to be okay. Just calm down. Let's have dinner. But after dinner, Joseph tested his brothers. He wanted to test them. He told his household manager to fill all their sacks with as much food as they can, to give silver back, to put the silver at the top, but he wanted his silver cup on Benjamin's bag, along with the silver in the grain. So they left, but Joseph told his household manager to go after them and question why they repaid this hospitality with and gratitude for stealing the, for stealing the silver cup that was put in Benjamin's bag. So the conversation happened, and the brothers said that they did nothing wrong, so they did the searching and found it in Benjamin's bag, and they were forced to come back to Joseph's house. So more conversation happens, and Joseph wanted to, only wanted Benjamin to stay as punishment. He wanted to keep Benjamin as a slave as punishment for stealing it, and the rest can go back. 
Then Judah appeals to have Benjamin with them. He's trying to convince Joseph to let Benjamin go so Jacob does not die of grief. And this is where the story picks up, Genesis 45, 1 through 8. Joseph couldn't hold it in much longer. Keeping a front before all of his attendants, he cried out, Leave! Clear out! Everyone leave! So there was no one with Joseph when he identified himself to his brothers, but his sobbing was so violent that the Egyptians couldn't help but hear him. The news was soon reported to Pharaoh's palace. Joseph spoke to his brothers. I am Joseph. Is my father really still alive? But his, but his brothers couldn't say a word. They were speechless. They couldn't believe what they were seeing and hearing. Come closer to me, Joseph said to his brothers, and they came closer. I am Joseph, your brother whom you sold into Egypt. But don't feel badly. Don't blame yourselves for selling me. God was behind it. God sent me here ahead of you to save lives. There has been a famine in the land now for two years, and the famine will continue for five more. Neither, plow, neither plowing nor harvesting. God set me on ahead to pave the way to make sure that there was a remnant in the land, to save your lives in an amazing act of deliverance. So you see, it wasn't you who sent me here, but God. He sent me in place as a father to Pharaoh, put me, put me in charge of his personal affairs, and made me ruler of all. Now I believe that Joseph just had an incredible epiphany here. He finally understood God's provision and care throughout his entire life, every trial, every suffering. All of that was one step of the journey of Joseph being put in his position of power and saving the lives of thousands. Can you imagine how hard it would be to let your brothers off the hook like he did? He didn't blame them at all. He said it was God, not the brothers who allowed them to go through what he went through. Joseph refused to hold on to the bitterness and rage, and he chose to love. There's an old saying, and it goes something like this. Holding a grudge is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Think about that for a second. It makes sense, doesn't it? We convince ourselves that the longer we hold a grudge, the angrier we make ourselves feel towards someone. And the more powerful our bitterness, the more it will hurt that other person. And sure, it may hurt them a little bit, but the bigger damage happens to our hearts when we hold on to the bitterness. It's like poison eating away at our souls. So why is all, why all this? Well, what am I saying? Well, Jesus died on the cross for your sins, for my sins, for our sins. And despite the fact that we never deserved it, in fact, we still go through life sinning against God as if it doesn't matter. Yet, Jesus forgives us time and time and time and time again. He does not hold the grudge against us. So when we hold grudges and become better, it's like us saying to God that we deserve forgiveness from Him for all our junk, but everybody else, they don't get it. They don't deserve that forgiveness. It's a double standard. Jesus calls us to forgive. It's not easy, and sometimes you may need to say, I forgive you. Before you actually hear, believe those words in your heart. But eventually, after time goes on, you will begin to believe the words coming out of your mouth. Joseph understood this that the only one standing in the way of him having the best year ever was himself and his own bitterness. He learned to release the grudge and bitterness, and because of his decision, he experienced freedom. So who have you been holding a grudge against? Who do you need to forgive? And again, on the flip side, who do you need to seek forgiveness from? And that is it. We are, next week is our finale for best year ever. And just like you know, we are going to take a week break. It's Christmas, it's the holidays. Plus, on the 30th, we have a very special event that I will be announcing hopefully on Friday um, with our Let's Talk Grief video. Um, what my plan is for this Friday is that'll come live at, well, depending on how long the video is, because I really don't know. That'll come live at 7, and it'll be a premiere, and then we'll just roll right into, or 6, and then we'll just roll right into the uh, Christmas at Freddy's. Um, so that's the plan for that, just to let you know. But there is a special announcement with that video. I've said it again. I've teased it enough. If it doesn't come out on Friday, I'm just going to announce it. And what is this? Um, so, but after that, we are going to start a series on influence. I don't remember what I think. I think we're doing the power of influence. So. 
get ready for that. To me, it'll be a great talking point to 2021. We start with our levels of influence. So how cool is that? Uh, also, don't forget, we have our core crew, core crew Christmas sale that is ongoing until Friday the 18th. Uh, so that means you only have two more days to put this up or to put in your order. So there, if you go to any of our core crew Christmas posts, you will see the order form there, fill it out. We are selling out a lot quicker, of th a lot more things than I thought we were. Um, and I say that as I'm staring into all of our stuff. So so get, get here before it's too late. We still have the Compassion Giving Tree. Uh, there should be more information on that. Hopefully, if not, there will be tomorrow. Um, and uh, the tutoring connections, please help out best you can. Uh, there will be announcements at the end. I've changed up how that's being done, so it'll look a little easier and hopefully a little bit more digestible. So, so yeah, as always, stay safe, stay sane, and above everything else, stay blessed. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.